Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for Coffee and Card at Home. Um, it's a bit of a miracle that I've managed to get on time tonight because we've had one of those evenings where things have kind of just all happened but nevertheless I'm here and hopefully I can relax a bit now and do a little bit of crafting with you. So today we had our um, third Zoom session using a perfectly plaid stamp set and the um, pine tree punch that goes with it um, and this was the card that we created um, using the trees that look like more like real trees and then um, some lovely DSP background which to be honest you could use most DSPs that you wanted to but this is one from about a year ago um, which is all the kind of plaid looking patterns which goes so nicely with the set so we're going to make a start so you're going to need a wisp of white um, card base, which this is the thick card stock. Hi Tracy, thanks for joining me, hope you're okay. Um, so the thick card stock is just a bit better for card bases than the standard white card that we've got. So we've just got that done first of all, and then I'm going to stick on my... Um, DSP and I've cut this so that it is just ever so slightly smaller than our C6 base so um, this measures 14.3 centimetres by 10 centimetres so it just gives you that very small um, sort of difference there which gives you that nice white edge around the outside so I've got obviously the choice of two sides personally I'm not such a huge fan of the yellow. I think I'm going to go with that one. Not particularly traditional Christmas colours, but we'll see what we can work with, I think. So I'm just going to get that stuck on to my card base. So just a bit of Tombow to get that stuck down. And like I say, all of our DSP is double-sided, so it does give you a bit of a chance to decide which you prefer. And sometimes it's nice to go for the slightly unconventional colours for Christmas, actually. So, next we're going to stamp our trees. Now... Obviously, you can see here, I went for completely traditional kind of colours. That's a traditional Christmas tree colour. But because I've actually got a non-traditional kind of colour here going on, what I might actually do is stamp them in different colours to coordinate with that. So I think I might grab some blues. So I'm just using my paper piercing mat. It just gives me a slightly better surface to stamp on and if you've got quite a detailed stamp sometimes it doesn't always come out brilliantly so using that mat for an extra bit of cushioning can sometimes really help. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go for Misty Moonlight Trees I think. Um, nobody said I have to go traditional colours. So I think I'm going to go for one as it comes. Oh, that's very dark. So I'm definitely going to stamp off this time. I'm going to go with two that are stamped off. There we go. I think that'll be quite nice, actually. And actually, some of the ladies this morning, because everyone got sort of different backgrounds, uh, when they were kind of faced with the colour they'd been given, some of them kind of really loved it some of them weren't so sure so um we did have a couple of people that went slightly off piste and did something a bit different and then we had um some other people who just went with it and said right let's go with this i'm going to do something a little bit different so i'm going to punch those out with my pine tree punch now this tree has got a separate trunk that you can add on but my trunks are not actually going to be visible so I'm not too worried about um, doing that. Okay, let's try and get that all lined up. 
nicely. So I've got my three trees, which then I can arrange them. I think I might arrange them so I have my darker one in the middle and my two light ones overlapping it I think a bit like I did with my green one before and then this colour is kind of a pinky colour I think it might be melon mambo so I'm going to go with that I'm going to go for melon mambo and we're just going to take a very small strip and we're going to put that over the top of our trees so I've actually got a longer piece and it gives me a bit of an option to decide what I want to do with it and I'm just going to use Ho Ho Ho, which is from the set. There we go. And actually, you can't really tell too much that that is pink. Um, I think sometimes there's that worry, isn't there, that it, you know, not traditional colours, is it going to look right? I think actually that's worked really well. Now, this is why I need to change things up slightly because I had given everybody gold stars to put on top of their trees. However, this is not going to go with me well if I put gold with this colour because to me that's not a good colour combination. So I'm going to change them for silver stars. So just bear with me a second because I will just have to find some silver glitter card and also my little star punch. So here's some silver glitter card. Or you could use silver foil, whatever you've got to hand. I don't think I have any silver foil. Sorry for all the noise. I'm just going to have to find my mini star punch. I hope I can find it. I will be totally honest and say this is not a Stampin' Up punch because sadly I did not manage to get one of the tiny stars from Stampin' Up, which is very sad. So I'm just going to punch out three of these little stars from some silver glitter card. And I'm sure you've probably spotted on my original that I also use gold gems. So we're not going to use gold gems. We're going to go silver. And also, excuse me for moving across, but I'm going to grab the equivalent of this one, which this is the gold twine. This is our silver version. So I think that will work better in the long run. And then I'm just going to need some silver gemstones. So there we go. So all equipped now. So it is possible obviously to go with different colours and just change it up a little bit and you could come up with something completely different. So what I'm going to do first of all while I've got this sentiment here is I am just going to tie a little bit of this silver trim which I really love this trim. Just going to tie it around the end. It's a bit fiddly because it's quite curly. Just going to tie it around the end of my sentiment. Oh, not the night for doing fiddly things like this, I think. To stop it moving and going anywhere, I'm just going to tie it in another knot, I think. And pull that nice and tight. And then I think in a minute when I've got it stuck down, I will tie it in a bow. I'm going to do that in a minute. So first of all, this dark blue tree, I'm going to just stick that on with Tombow as it is. And that's going to go right in the centre of my card. And then these two are going to have dimensionals put on them. 
I'm just using up a few of my scraps at the moment. So forgive the odd looking nature of some of them. But I like to try and use all of the bits that I can and get some good use out of them. So both of these are going to be stuck on the dimensionals just to raise them up a little bit more. So that one's then going to overlap that one slightly. And just take the backs off this one. And same on this one. And there we go. Then I can start to work out how long I want this to be because I want it, want it to cover over my um tree trunks and i think i'm just going to flag the end on this side so i'm just going to cut that off make it a bit shorter then i'm going to cut a slit up part way and then i'm going to go from this corner to the top of the slit and then the same on the other side Now, because I've got that dip in the middle, I want to account for that when I stick it down. So I'm just going to put a dimensional um, in the centre there. And actually, I'm just going to use sort of a little bit of dimensional just to raise it up. And then this side and this side will be raised up by the dimensionals that are under these two trees anyway. So that should just help to even things out a bit so that your um, sentiment doesn't sag. So I'm just going to try and stick that. Just suddenly realised I didn't pull my backing off. That's why it won't stick. <laughs> Let's try that again. As it's so my dimensional is stuck and then I can just press down on the other two ends just to seal those down. That's it. Now my stars, I'm going to actually stick those on with glue dots because my mini glue dots are just the perfect size for these stars and it's just a little less messy than having glue but if you haven't got many ones you can always um just stick it on with glue and the last one Then I need to try and see if I can tie myself a bow with this. So fiddly when you get to doing quite small ones, as you can see. <laughs> oh, that nearly went through. I'm just going to hold my knot and see if I can just adjust those bits ever so slightly. Not the easiest thing to do. Just trim that end off and that end off. Oh, just about got away with it. Not the best bow in the world, but I think it will do. What I might do actually, because it's sticking up a little bit, 
is I might just get a glue dot and what you can do is you can kind of almost squash the glue dots a little bit um, but just pop it so that it's just under the knot and then I can press it down so then you've got the added bonus that it will keep the bow in place but it will also um, stop it from untying as well so it's quite a handy bit to do then the last thing I'm going to do is just to put a few of the gems on um, tend to try and go with threes Ooh, it doesn't want to come off a little bit of the twine on there I think that darker one works quite nicely in the background. So I'm not going to do three on that one. I think I will just go for two on that one. And then three on this one. You could, of course, put more. There we go, and I think I will say that that one is finished. So a very different looking card. If I bring back the other ones, you'll see, obviously those are much more conventional kind of colours that we've gone for. But I think actually the blue trees has worked really well with the blue background. Um, definitely silver, I think, was the right choice to go with on that one for the stars and the the gems but quite a nice card to showcase your DSP but still keep it quite Christmassy with the Christmas trees so just a quick recap of what we've used the stamp set that we've used is perfectly plaid and we've used the Christmas tree stamp here and ho 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 for the sentiment we then cut out our trees with the pine tree punch the inks that I've used are um, Melon Mumbo for the sentiment and Misty Moonlight for the trees and those coordinated with my DSP. And then I finished it off with some silver, um, elegant trim I think this is called, um, some silver glitter card for the stars and a few silver rhinestones. And that's it. So hopefully that's one that you could maybe mass produce a few if you are still in need of those and next week we'll be doing our final card for this set using the perfectly plaid bundle it'll also be our last christmas cards um so then we'll be moving away from christmas because hopefully you'll have all got caught up with making them by then and be on to writing them so I hope you have a good time Tracy getting some done this weekend as well um, don't forget to show me on the group page as well if you get some done and I will see you next week at the same time for the last week of Perfectly Plaid and then we've got December's instalment coming soon which is completely not Christmas um, but I will keep that as a surprise for you all soon so have a good week, take care and I will see you soon. Bye.